Hello, welcome to The Rest is Entertainment with me, Marina Hyde. And me, Richard Osmond. Hi, Marina. Hello, Richard. Um, this is exciting, isn't it? Let's get started on our long journey together. Wow, already we've got a catchphrase. <laughs> Let's get started on our long journey together. It's, it's not the catchiest one. I think we'll come up with something better than that across the course of our many conversations. Over the next 12 years. Um, now, we're going to be talking about all sorts of things on The Rest is Entertainment. Movies, TV. Books. Books. I've heard Showbiz. Of Showbiz. Scandal. I'm annoyed I'm presenting it because so I'd like to listen to it. <laughs> and the way that all these stories are covered, because I think that's always a big part of it nowadays. But really, just a lot of quite salacious stuff. Absolutely. But, and also lots of positive stuff about what people should watch, what people should read, all of that malarkey. Oh, well, as soon as I said positive, you slightly went, oh, no. No, I didn't, That's Richard. not what I signed I'm up for. I, I'm, I'm, I'm positive about huge amounts of it, but there will be some negativity for me if necessary. Okay, I'll cover positive. And you can talk about Matt Hancock. Yeah. We'll be talking about the jungle for sure. Talking about Farage, but I, then we, we would have to go back via Hancock, via Peter Andre. If we're going to talk about I'm a Celebrity, and I think we should. Yeah. I have been quite shocked by some of the reaction to Nigel Farage's appearance in the jungle, which I think has tended towards the bedwetting. With your reality head on, Richard, mm. what do you think? Is it a good booking? Well, it's a good booking for ITV. Yeah. For sure. Um is it a good booking for Farage? I mean, he's making a lot of money from it, but it's not going to rehabilitate him. Literally about six years ago, he said, um, oh, this is not something that you'd do in the height of your career. This would be something at the end of your career, and I'm not desperate for money. You think, hmm, what's but changed? But has he not fooled himself into thinking that actually his great idol... In our country, what ha tends to happen is that you do reality TV when you're kind of washed up, and some politicians mm. have done it, but it's the sort of downward slide. Now, his great idol, Donald Trump, of course, did it completely the other way. He was yeah. the biggest star of the sort of first golden era of reality te television on that side of the Atlantic. And he parlayed that into something quite big, really, in the end. I think we have to be honest with ourselves. But he was the host. He was the host of The Apprentice. He, he was, was the host. He was Ant and Deck. Yeah, but, you know? you know, we're a much smaller country and you take what you can you can get. And I think in Farage's case, I think he has convinced himself that this is a route back. He goes on a lot about young people watch this show. The idea that um, you're suddenly the kind of poet of the 18 to 24-year-olds, I think is something is slightly for the birds he's now got a tiktok account which is bizarrely quite popular i don't know how much of it's hate watches how much of it is ironist watches but he seems to think he's kind of reaching out and i guess setting a light a new series of fans, a whole new generation of fans by the way this podcast is sponsored by ironist watches <laughs> um i just think hancock tried to do the same thing and you know he came third or something but it Nothing happened. He didn't sell any books. He's not getting booked on new things. You know, he's not. He's, he doesn't have a grime career. We have to say that the form book suggests that it won't do anything for him. That yeah. he'll either humiliate himself in a sort of way like George Galloway did on Celebrity Big Brother, yeah. or he'll get into trouble like Nadine Doris did for her experience on I'm a Celebrity. But will he be able to parlay into something bigger? That doesn't. The form book says no. Having said that. The form book has been thrown out of the window in quite a lot of different ways over the last few years. And it, I don't think it's beyond the realms that he could use it as a springboard back into something. I had more trouble with Hancock being booked because Hancock was a serving politician. He'd just been at the heart of a such a huge sort of scandal. And he was at the heart of an inquiry which still hadn't been um, concluded. Uh, and yeah. he was nakedly trying to rescue his reputation. Hancock, I think that was a great booking because I tell you what, that was our court, really, wasn't it? Mm. Because even the COVID inquiry does not have statutory powers. The, <laughs> that might be the best yeah. justice that you see meted out to Matt Hancock. That, that, that is our Hague. Yeah, that's, isn't it? sorry, I realise that makes us a pretty depleted country, but this is the it, way it is. And it's if not it a is, kangaroo court, it's a kangaroo testicle yeah. court. <laughs> I was reading about a Taylor Swift cruise, which I thought was quite a oh, hilarious really? thing. It's not an official Taylor Swift. It's one, like one of the only bits of her merchandise she hasn't sewn up. But they're going to have a cruise boat um, and it's going to set sail from Miami the day the era's tour ends. Wow. And um, it's going to be four days of swapping, making friendship bracelets, dressing up in your very, in your different eras and genuinely kind of having a Taylor Swift time. It is almost completely sold out instantly. That's a reality show I'd watch. Yeah. I, I, I thought Taylor Swift cruise, you meant she'd married Tom Cruise and I'd miss some big... <laughs> That would be a... That would certainly break the internet and perhaps the planet. That's an empire, isn't it? Yes, that, that would be one. Um, but the new kids did a cruise, I think. Cruises are really big. Yeah. I mean, Disney, as we were talking about not that long ago to each other, Disney parks and cruises makes twice what 
all the movies and entertainment make. And in, in some ways, only the movies and entertainment have to sort of feed through into the profit-making divisions, which are the parks and cruises. I saw an interesting one that um, Netflix has been doing, which are Bridgerton Balls. And wow. they go around to various This towns. podcast is sponsored by Bridgerton Balls. <laughs> And they go around um, to various towns. They've been absolutely massive sellouts. Wow. Everyone gets dressed up as, you know, they're called Lady Whistledown's Balls or whatever they are. And everyone gets dressed up. And it's apparently, they are hugely profitable. All these kind of sideline things yeah. of entertainment um, are absolutely massive. But Gwyneth Paltrow's got her cruise, the Goop Cruise. She's got like, Goop Cruise? Yeah. I always think Goop that was, yeah, great, the Goop Cruise doesn't sound great, I know you have to like have sort of an hourly enema and it's not really a holiday, is it? Oh, no. um, but, you know, maybe that is paradise for, for some. For some people. For some. That's what the Scientologists always used to do. When you got to the inner, inner, inner layer of, um, you know, operating Theta and Eight or whatever, yeah. they used to tell you what it, the secrets of, that Hubbard had written down out on the ship at sea. Wow. And I always felt that they do this because at that point you're like, no, it can't be. It. I can't have spent like upwards of $400,000 over the years trying to get to this point. And you have to be told it at sea because then there's no escape. And it's international waters, yeah. of course. <laughs> you can you know, say what you like. Which is, what you can say. That's yeah. why all the oligarchs have their yachts sort of yeah. like two miles offshore, isn't it's, it? It's the oligarchs and people being told that actually aliens came to Earth in exact replicas of DC-10s and just screaming into the void when they realised they spent all their money on is, this knowledge. Is that the secret? Yeah, it's one the of the secrets. Yeah. Wow. Um, in Ashdown Forest, where I grew up, grew up in Sussex, uh, you always see like John Travolta's always there, Tom Cruise yeah. is always there. It's those sleepy little Sussex villages, absolutely full of Hollywood A listers because the Scientology uh, church is in East Grinstead. Yeah. I had a builder once who just left a bathroom half finished, half finished. He kept going away. And I said, C could you just let me know which days you might come in? And he said, I'm basically spending most of my time in East Grinstead now. And I said, oh, do you have family there? And he said, no, I'm a Scientologist. And I thought, Whoa. it's never getting finished. It's never getting finished. A Scientologist it? bathroom? Yeah. yeah. How's just, the grouting? Yeah. He never finished it. I no had to way. get someone else to finish it. So the self-improvement was in inverse proportion to my home improvement. And I, I, whatever it did for him, it certainly didn't do a lot for my bathroom. That's amazing. I didn't, I thought all Scientologists were actors. I didn't know they had, I didn't know they had like, no, I think they have to get, fitters. you know, they have to get non-celebrities to, to pay the bills. The foot soldiers, as it were, the people who, you know, fork out over the, forever and ever and don't have to go to a specific church called the Celebrity Centre. Have you ever driven past that in L.A.? No. It's one of the, it's, it's a building and it literally says the celeb Scientology Celebrity Centre off at the top. Oh, wow. That's, <laughs> I mean, you know. That's aspirational, yes. isn't it? I mean, I suppose perhaps you could argue that some Renaissance churches are essentially that showy. But you know what I mean? Yeah. This is, they should do that yeah, on the we'll rest of history. We, that's Come on, guys. Podcast. Got crossover, crossover episode. Uh, Church of Scientology, Celebrity Scientology, yes. is it the same as the Reformation? There's something in that. <laughs>